I should have known it would all end in heartbreaking tears. It always does when you don't make your pronoun references clear. I knew the pain wouldn't get any easier, but it's all in a day's work for Detective Max Johnson. She came into my office like a fence post. Structurally sound, but if you rubbed it the wrong way, you'd come back with a handful of splinters. I didn't actually hear what she was saying. Something about the Mafia, kidnap, I don't know. It must have been important though. By the time she left, I really had no idea what was going on. But I had a job to do. Looks like the janitor forgot to clean up. By the light of I had to get answers, and I knew just the place to look. What the hell are you doing? Clean up the street for scumbags like you. What? I didn't break any law. Law? We'll let the lawyers handle that one. I'll handle you. That doesn't even make sense. Sense? You mean like change? What do you know about the penny roll killer? The penny dime nickel killer? The penny dime nickel quarter penny killer? Rupee. Look, you idiot, I don't even know what you're talking about. I'm pretty sure you don't either. I'm a loose cannon detective that plays by his own rules, and I don't have time for this. Who? What? No, you said that plays by his own rules. It should be who. It says who? That should be whom. Gesundheit. No. That's it. I'm taking you in for arson. Like a jogger on a treadmill, I was getting nowhere fast. It was time to look for some help, and I knew just the man who could give it, Detective Dick Fisher. Johnson, you look familiar. We've been working together for 10 years. And you still don't recognize me? What do you want, Johnson? I need some help on a case. What do you know about the penny nickel killer? These were taken at various crime scenes around town. As you can see, they all have these on their shoulders. It was obvious, all the similarities between the victims. Each one of them had usable arms. Johnson, do you know what your problem is? No! Why don't you tell me what my problem is? You have post-traumatic stress disorder. More importantly, you never learn to avoid ambiguous or remote pronoun references. You're out of line, dick! In the sentence, after hitting the seal of his club, it broke. What broke? The seal or the club? It would be better to say, after hitting the seal of his club, the seal's skull broke. Maybe you're right, dick. I don't believe in myself. Maybe I don't believe in anything anymore. What? Why did you leave me out here like this all day? Even if you were gonna arrest me for something I didn't do. This isn't a jail. I thought this would be a good time to talk. 
You left me out here all day. This sucks. I'm in no mood to hear about your problems. We've all got them. I suffer from a rare terminal disease known as wandering gallbladder. I'm sorry. How much time do you have? Actually, with regular treatment, I can live a long and healthy life, but complications can occur. Well, by the latest Draculus, you only have three hours? Not even close. Not even three hours? They say it could take years for symptoms to really be a problem. They? That can mean anything! You should avoid the indefinite use of they, you, and it. For example, in the sentence, in 2001, they suspended all government agencies. They should be replaced with Congress, as you can see on the screen. What? On what screen? I understand now. Thank you, arsonist artist. You believed in me when I didn't believe in myself. Cool. Can you, uh, untie me now? Johnson, get down to the old furry lobster restaurant now. Penny Nickel Killer's inside, and he has nowhere left to run. It's time to take him out. I'm ready. I know your style, Johnson. You're reckless and irresponsible. With no regard for the law. You watch yourself in there and follow my lead. Let's not have last week happen again. I'll do what has to be done. Listen to me, Johnson. Don't use a pronoun to refer to an implied antecedent. What do you mean? In the sentence after braiding Anne's hair, Sue decorated them with ribbons. What does them refer to? I guess that could mean a lot of things. What are you saying? I'm saying them should be replaced with the braids. Let's go. We got him. Yes, I see you caught a band with arms. Yeah, I guess he has arms. It's pretty clear who this is. Right, he's the- Next victim. What? It's a good thing we got here in time. Okay, then who's the killer? You should know better than anyone, Dick. You're the pity nickel killer. Okay, how do you figure it out? Simple. I found this vial of professional seal clubbing club sealer. I'm not a seal clubber. I wouldn't even know where to find seals if I wanted to be one. In addition, that's ketchup. Oh. Well, that's not all. Avoid ambiguous or remote pronoun references. In the sentence, it broke when Gloria set the pitcher on the glass table. What broke? You should say, the pitcher broke when Gloria set it on the glass table. Avoid the indefinite use of they, it, and you. Any phrase starting with they say is unclear without knowing who they refers to. To refer to persons, Say who, whom, or whose, not which or that. For example, instead of saying, I have seven children, four of which live at home, 
One should say, for of whom live at home. And finally, do not use a pronoun to refer to an implied antecedent. In the sentence, in Mary Gordon's The Shadow Man, she writes about her father's past. She should be replaced with Mary Gordon. Otherwise, we don't know who it's referring to. And of course, there's this. No. Oh. This is a shopping list. Knowing that, it's your shopping list. Looks like I need to pick up some cottage cheese. You haven't cited a single piece of evidence. Most of what you've been saying is just a list of grammar rules from the Bedford Handbook. Yes, but they're very important grammar rules. It's all well and good, Detective Johnson. If you got one thing, generally, avoid broad references of this, that, which, and it. This is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. I'm done. Done, but we're just getting to the exciting conclusion. No, this is too stupid even for me to participate in. You do whatever you have to do. I haven't even started on adjectives and adverbs. I don't care. Can I go now? Are you the penny nickel killer? Yeah, I thought that was pretty obvious. Are you sorry for what you did? Killing people? Yes. I don't believe you. You don't mean it. No, seriously. I mean it. Alright, you can go. Another day, another case, another scar. It's a dirty job, but someone's gotta do it. In the tangled locks of crime and corruption, Max Johnson is the conditioner.